Hello, hello guys, this is Doc M and as you can see I'm playing on the mind crack server yes I'm back baby woohoo I'm so back I'm so happy ah oh, you don't know how much you can miss that game I played a little bit you know like, like on my laptop I had with me but yeah the internet connection mostly was crappy in these hotels and yeah tried to upload a lot of vlogs um, and I have thought I've so, yeah I've seen you guys like them a lot um, Many of you, uh, yeah, a lot of views on them, a lot of positive feedback, a crap load of likes. Um, really awesome, guys. Um, you know, when we when we left, I talked about these topics. Thought I'm a little bit concerned, maybe, um, but phew, no need to be. You guys got my back, like 100%. And I just want to say thank you for that. And yeah, moving on with the rambling. Um, there will be more rambling. <laughs> Of course, I have to tell you, uh, you know, what I've seen, what I've been doing in the United States, and it was a epic trip, guys, epic trip, um, Minecon and all, but all the other stuff uh, I did was also pretty epic. But yeah, I want to check something when we're here on the server. <laughs> well, while we were gone, so much stuff happened. Um, Minecraft 1.7 actually came out, and yeah, we're running that now, and yeah, I want to see, we have a new hub somewhere somewhere out that leads to the new areas and yeah I'm looking for that portal here and then we will go there what is that why is there a clean stone wall hmm. oh where is this leading okay what's up I'm just looking yeah yeah I'm going I'm going it's okay <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna um, look about. Sespling is on. I need to ask him where the um, way to the new lands is because I definitely um, want to have a look here. Our people are reserving the places. What do we have? Desert outpost. Ah, sand mining area. Nice. Cool. Lots of stuff happening. Let me see over there. It's nothing. Okay, let's go to the other hubs. Oh, there's Sess actually. Hey, Sess. Oh, and he's wearing his new cape, the Minecon cape. He says, where is the portal to the new lands, question mark. Do we wear the new po uh, thing as well? No. We wear the old school thing. We have to change that. Let me try. All right, here it is. In the yellow hub, um, or the yellow section of the hub here, um, there is a way to the new hub mesa biome definitely want to try that out get away from here what do you want <laughs> man and yeah just want to have a look back there how it looks let's see if there's a map whoa caught it just in time <laughs> okay let's ride back there while we do that um by the way i'm wearing my old headset let me see if the sound settings are okay yes they are and um, just for the sake of it here and there I want to use it, I feel like, yeah, because it's really comfortable and nice to use because I don't have to do any post-processing with the mic. And I still think, whatever mic I tried, my G35 mic just sounds the bad, the mi best. There might be a little humming sound or whatever if you really listen closely, but I just like the way things sound with it. So yeah, might have to fiddle around with the sound settings at some point with the new headset I'm using. But today, just wanna don't want to think about that. I just want to think about what has been happening in the United States. And I want to have a quick look at the things here. I um, just want to check out the new hub and look around a little bit so I know what's going on. And yeah, we have these minecart weirdness going on. It's not really riding snooze. I checked my settings. Everything is set up correctly, um, set to 120 frames per second and loading 12 chunks. Um, that was actually pretty good. I might do have to play around with the settings and see if it goes a little bit better, but it's a bit of a jerky right here. It's not really smooth. Nope, there's some stuff missing. Alright. Looks cool with the new, the new um, yeah, stained glass here. 
I really like the green or the lime green I think that is here. What? Alright. We're catching up to the other minecart here. What is that doing on the track? Huh? <laughs> Weird. Come here. Whoop. Alright. Tracks broken out. Um, Alright, let's go through this portal then and have a quick look. But it keeps on going back there, you saw that. Um, okay. Oh yeah. That's actually a Mesa biome. That is really nice. Let's quickly go over there and grab us some clay. Oh no, that's red sand. Yeah, there is Mesa. Okay, over there. Just need to remember it's right here at the desert temple. Somebody left a horse here. Whose horse is that? Says horse, free to use, but please return to pen. Good guy says. Woohoo. Let's go. So yeah, guys, I've been to a lot of places in Florida. Um, started down in Miami. Here's clay. I, actually, right away, we don't need the horse for now. I don't want to really explore. I just want to grab some clay so we can go back to the base and keep on building. We got things to do. Um, f in the near future, by the way, I don't plan to have an, a real um, outside base here or something. Um, there's so much stuff you have to do around the old base. The flood is coming, guys. So yeah. Um, for the next time I will not uh, do an extension. But I have to find some stuff um, in new biomes. I also have to find some um, uh, roofed forest with the saplings. Um, definitely need that because yeah, with those you can do some funny, funny stuff. Um, Panda will release a video about it soon. <laughs> I had to have to get the guys going. Came back from uh, Miami, was checking if they were lazy and they were. The zip code guys, you always have to push them. They barely released any videos and whatnot. But now I'm back, don't you worry. The new innovative uh, inventions will come out again on their channels when I push them a bit to show what we find out. It's kind of, yeah, <laughs> always must to be there and yeah, get them going, lazy guys. <laughs> yeah, talking about them, it was great to meet uh, members of the zip crowd. JL was there in the United States, of course, too. Cabo... Um, who was not? Who was there as well? Um, uh, 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 Cabo was there. Tango Tech. Um, 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 and I'm not good. Sure. Oh man, there were so many people, <coughs> but it was great meeting them, talking to them, and yeah, that was later on at the Minecon, which was this year, complete insanity. But I didn't expect anything else. Um, I thought if it was anywhere close to what we experienced at the last Minecon in Paris, it's gonna be sick. And yeah, it was more crazy. And yeah, <laughs> that's a separate story, man. There's so many things that happened there. I can't believe it. It's an, again, crazy, humbling experience. It was Minecon, um, literally Minecon. You know, people were really happy to see us. And yeah, we were happy to see it was just a happy, happy family thing. It was awesome. So yeah, but I started off in Miami, um, where we arrived, and it's literally taken straight off uh, Miami Vice, um, if you know this series back in the days. It really looks like that, um, these Art Deco buildings, especially Miami Beach. Miami itself, um, downtown, we checked out a day. Uh, I mean, if you see New York, um, you know, it doesn't really rock your world when you see Miami downtown, but still, it's interesting. And yeah, mostly we were spending time around the Miami beaches area, um, which was really cool, as mentioned. Um, it is a crazy tourist trap there. And yeah, I got to tell you a story. That was the only time me and my girlfriend really got caught in a freaking tourist trap. But they were so sneaky about it, we didn't really realize. So... Um, at day two, we were walking about at Miami Beach, and there's all these bars at the you know ocean, and they offer they have happy hour all the time. Whenever you walk by, they say hey happy hour, and yeah, they have these super super aggressive marketing girls there that try to pull you in and you know say here come sit sit down you get this and that. So we walked by and we said oh man it would be nice if we drank a cocktail, why not dr drink one of them here. And they had this huge fishbowl-like cocktails. We thought, let's try that out. So we asked, how much is it? And they said, yeah, we are offering happy hour right now. That means uh, 50 bucks and you get um, two cocktails, basically. You get one and then another one for free. 
He's like, yeah, that that is pretty okay because those cocktails were like uh, gigantic. They were as big as if you would drink, I don't know, five ten dollar cocktails. It's really huge. So it was not an extreme ripoff. Still, well, yeah, it's a bit rippy. I mean. Uh, 50 bucks for a drink, but as I said, it was huge. It would be really like if you would order five other cocktails. So it was kind of okayish. So we sit down, drink, and then um, we also um, are a bit hungry and ask if they can suggest us something, something nice. That yeah, we have a really nice um, tester or sampler plate with um, the different meats we offer, and uh, that that sounds good. Um, nice price um, it was even they said it was only uh, 15 bucks for and it's nice for a sampler plate so all right everything is good we sit down drink our drink um, two of them of course uh, Karin got one and I so they come back and I said okay we're done um, want to get the check please so she, she brings me the check and it says 115 euros plus um, you know, her gratitude, that's the tip, that's all right. Typically, sometimes they include it and it was 20%. That is the highest you would normally go, 18 to 20%. If you give that, that means you really had excellent service and you were really happy about it. Yeah, so plus, plus that. And yeah, then it was a bill with way over 130 bucks or something. I was like, wait a minute, what is that? Let me, and then I checked and then there was two times 50 bucks on there. And I was like, hey, what, what is that? You said uh, there's cocktail happy hour. I don't, I don't, that seems pretty crazy if you ask me. I mean, 25 by, uh, bucks per is okay, uh, but we didn't want to spend 100. Um, it was happy hour. I mean, sure, it's big drinks, but yeah, 100 bucks for drinks, a bit, a bit much for me. I ain't no millionaire. Um, sorry. And she was like, yeah, but uh, that's the normal price. And said, you have happy hour. And then the freaking trick, if um, you order another drink for on the same person, you get it for free. Oh, I had to sneeze. <laughs> So if you uh, buy another drink on the, on, the, uh, on the same person, then you get it for free, but you cannot. It's like, what? And he didn't say anything. Then I would have just said, okay, one drink, two drinks on me. And just because I said, yeah, you know, for she takes that, my girlfriend was with me, and I take that, they calculated it two times. And yeah, I mean, I was uh, really pissed about it. And yeah, this place... I mean, I'm not going to say what it's called, but for sure, I'm never going to go back there for sure. And I at least told 20 people whenever we walk by there because it was right there on, you know, on the sea side. Don't go there. <laughs> this is a crappy place. They're going to rip you off. <laughs> because, yeah, that was a typical tourist trap. But, yeah, that was literally the only thing we fell for with all the rest. We did pretty good and, yeah, we're not fooled. Let me see how much do we got. Man, those Mesa biomes, they are so epic now. It's just awesome. <laughs> All right, um, I think that's good enough with the clay for now. Let's fill up this one stack there and go back. What cool thing we did at Miami, I mean, it's not like a, like a dream beach, you know, like in the Caribbean or something. It's very, there's a lot of infrastructure around and you have this small strip of beach and there's also like, yeah, beach is taking care of certain people and then you can hire some sunbeds there and, and yeah, it's, it's, it is full out um, tourist, you know. But um, still um, nice climate, very friendly and nice people. That is really cool. You got a lot of people from Cuba there um, Yeah, that came over over the decades and um, because Cuba is really close um, there to Florida. Um, from Key West, it's only about 90 miles or something, so really close. And yeah, um, the international flavor there is just amazing. I'm loving that, I um, was enjoying that a lot. You arrive basically and yeah, people talk Spanish with you, uh, better than they do, uh, speak English, which at the first uh, second is a bit surprising, but yeah, then you just think, all right, <laughs> this is what it is, let's talk a bit Spanish here then. Um, Ah, we got it. So yeah, um, riding bikes down the beach, there is like a 
like an area on the beach, like the lower area is just normal beach and on top there is where utility vehicles ride around and then the beach is kind of compressed and you can jog nicely there or uh, ride a bike. And we did that all the way down to the yeah, South Beach and checked all the rich people out there. You won't believe it how much money there is. We, we saw Justin Bieber's <laughs> yeah, um, freaking mansion and he has a boat, his yacht, which is I think called Usher because Usher found him on the tubes um, I think and yeah you could see that thing that was a freaking ship it is no no boat it's a ship it was gigantic looking at all that decadent stuff was interesting but inside made me giggle because I really found it funny that people pay literally amazing crazy amounts of money to live at this yeah row of millionaires it is called where you have these mansions and the houseboats kind of in the middle of Miami Beach and to be honest it is not really a nice place it's a freaking canal that looks like some kind of I don't know people pay so much money to live there just because it's Miami quote unquote you know what I mean um, it was actually hilarious to think about it so yeah we're checking that out and after a while we had enough of Miami our hotel there we had booked for three days I believe and then we picked up our car which was a nice muscle car um, it was um, a Dodge Challenger and that came with the hotels we booked um, it was not actually not expensive to have this car um, as a rental car and yeah we had it all the time it was a good deal with the um, yeah, um, travel agency we booked our hotel from here in Germany that worked out really well okay let's get out of that Whoop. and break it put it back in Ah, oh, we can't access it how do you um, how do we refill this system is there hoppers on the side? No, it just looks like it. Uh, let's toss these sticks. We could put one minecart just on there. How is that? I mean, that pops out a new card. Oh well, let's let's leave it there. Who cares? All right, I figured it out. Etho made this system. I don't know how it works at the moment. I have to check it one more time or ask him. Or maybe you guys can tell me. Right, we're going back to the witch hut area let's see who's on yeah Sasbling is on he's got like oh yeah we need to adjust our portal too Sas got addicted to playing survival minecraft which is cool <laughs> oh man <laughs> so yeah um, then we we got this car and um, yeah we drove down all the way to Key West and that was really cool um, it is a nice experience to ride around on the US highways um, although it was a bit lame you know you have to think you have a car that's really fast 300 horsepower or something you know it, it was nicer uh, and you wanna you wanna really ride the car right see what it can do whoa 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 wait a minute there's a baby coming down the stairs nope buddy forget about it wow <laughs> He jumped down with us. So, yeah, you most definitely want to, um, you know, what's going on? What? Why is everybody coming down the stairs? Stop that. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> what? So yeah, they definitely wanna wanna go fast with such a car, right? Um, I mean, you really wanna try it out. What is going on? Why can't I shift click stuff right now? Oh, it is already Harden Clay, you freaking idiot! <laughs> oh, what am I doing? This is already hard and clay, of course. Man, yeah, that's the good thing about the Mesa biome. Hello, dog. Welcome to the new Minecraft. Are you awake yet? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just need to give it color and then we can use it to build. What am I thinking here? So, yeah, we were driving down, down all the way to Key West, which is, um, oh, man, there was a lot of creepers here. 
a completely crazy place. Whoa. Okay, we can't go out. We have to stay. We have to stay a bit, guys. <laughs> and wait until the creepers disappear up there. We're trapped in our own little weird place down here. That is crazy. Well, in any case, I'm going to use that little break here to collect my thoughts a bit. And then I'm going to tell you about the most crazy place I've ever been, or one of the most crazy places I've ever been. The Fantasy Fest in Key West, guys. <laughs> that was crazy. Aha! The new cape. Just activated it. Uh, you have to restart your client and yet select it in your um, yeah account settings on the website. Yeah, there we go. It's a piston. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, it should fit a gel nicely because, yeah, he's a piston. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, so the witch farm is running nicely. I was just observing that as well a bit. And, yeah, while I was away... Um, I think people are maintaining it. Either it was B-dubs or no, he was away too. Sespling was away. I don't know. We have a lot of stuff. Um, in the time I was over in Miami, I was a yeah good week prior of Minecon. So yeah, people kept on working here, and stuff has been building up, which is really nice. And yeah, we should head up. Hopefully, it's safe from the creepers now. Wait a sec. Um, we might have to pearl away. Let's quickly check if they're still around. And then I can tell you about Key West while I do some cleanup jobs around the base um, so I can get ready for the big flood. They're gone. Awesome. So yeah, let's store away the hardened clay, which doesn't have to be cooked up. And yeah, so we got our muscle car, which was really nice to have. But as I said, I was a bit sad. Um, I would really would love to have taken it on the autobahn. And really see how fast it can go. And um, you know, um, I always like stayed within the speed limits when we were down um, in um, Florida because the cops there are no joke when it comes down to speeding. There will be very, very high fines you have to pay and so on. And yeah, we didn't want to risk that. And yeah, because why waste money with something stupid like that, right? Just because you want to feel the car. I mean, well. It was still cool, a um, lot of fun driving around with it. Um, it is no Porsche, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Um, so we did that, um, riding down um, all the way over the Keys, Key Largo, and yeah, there's a bunch of them, all the way down to Key West, and we didn't actually know that the Fantasy Fest was going down, which is basically, well, I don't know... <laughs> A lot of uh, crazy people, really crazy people, meeting in one place and going going nuts. <laughs> and um, that's happening there at Key West. You see a lot of, um, yeah, more or less dressed people. Um, you could say most of the people are kind of naked. Um, body painting is a thing, so it seems if you do body painting then, that doesn't count as naked. <laughs> And yeah, L Fantasy Fest, um, name is program, very, very crazy place down at Key West, um, crazy mixture of people, you know, um, old hippies still there from back in the days, meeting with the younger folks who just want a party, meeting with, you know, locals, uh, very, very crazy, um, big party, um, of course. Um, I wouldn't take my kids there, um, to be honest. Um, it is a, a big, big, big party. Um, one crazy thing we saw, in the midst of all this uh, insanity, we suddenly see people carrying around a cross um, Yeah, in a Jesus Christ-like posture. Um, basically, you know, um, had one guy hooked up to the cross and they were saying, um, what you're doing here is like uh, Gomorrah or Sodom. You know the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah where... Basically, uh, yeah, it's a biblical story um, where God came and destroyed um, these cities because they were so sinful. And yeah, they were saying what did, um, that was is another thing. You know, you see in America, freedom of speech is uh, huge. Um, or some people try to defend it, and yeah, people accepted their opinion. Some just said, "Get out of here, fool." Some others discussed. Um, I mean, I don't know if these guys really reached someone there with their message. 
which was at some point, I mean, you know, it quickly got you thinking, it was a crazy place. Um, it really was a crazy place. Um, and uh, still, you know, I would love to yeah, hang out there for a day or two and party a little bit. But uh, one thing's for sure, you cannot live down there in Key West. If you do that, uh, as a local, you will get sucked in into some kind of a weird, weird, surreal thing. But yeah, it was really impressive, you know, to to see that all. Also interesting to hear about the, yeah, the story, the history of Key West. As you know uh, me, I'm really interested in history because one of the things I always say is when you understand history, you will understand the past, uh, present and future. Um, because yeah, things always repeat and most of the things that happen in our world today are because of history, because yeah, there something else happened before. So yeah, um, the sto pirate stories there, really interesting, the buccaneers, and yeah, how it was um, conquered by Spanish people, and so on. Really, really interesting. And um, yeah, then we moved on back up towards uh, Miami, but stayed on the Keys, and we stayed in Key Largo, um, which was... Um, a more quiet place on the Keys and there we wanted to do a little trip um, rented um, a trip on a boat with other people not that we rented a boat uh, just you could just normally you know go on little trips to go snorkeling which was uh, at the beginning a really great idea and you have to know guys I have this certain fear um, I don't like the open sea too much to be honest you know I don't really um, trust what's going on in the open sea I think we should fix more we should also take out the rest of the dirt by now i can say this farm is running stable let's see if i have some glass down there so yeah um let me quickly see here we go um what did i say we were talking about whiskey lago yeah and i was talking about the ocean and that i have a little fear and that is the open sea um you know i'm not like paranoid that a freaking shark will jump me or something but i'm aware of things that are in the open sea and it makes me a bit freak out when I swim about and don't really know what's going on and yeah maybe I'm scared of sharks I don't know I like to watch a lot of do documentaries about sharks and things like that maybe that spooked me out too much um, I don't know chances are really slim that something will really attack you you know if you swim about there in the ocean a bit but yeah, can happen so whatever you know we ride out there with the boat and they said, yeah, we're going to go diving at a reef. And the last time I went snorkeling at the reef, it was uh, in Africa, in Kenya. And there the reef is directly in front of the beach and you can basically walk there. Um, so um, so we ride out and the guy keeps going. We're really fast boat and we keep on riding, 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 riding. And we end up, I don't know how far, at least 30 minutes straight ahead, straight out into the open sea. Um, which then pretty much freaked me out when he stopped and said, well... There's the reef, and I look over, maybe, I don't know, 50 meters away from the boat. You see this super dark spot, and yeah, what's dark over there? That's the reef, and yeah, here, grab your gear, let's go, guys. It's like, what? Out here? All right, so I said, okay, best thing, if you're scared of something, attack it right away. I didn't think long. I was actually the first guy jumping in. <gasps> jumping down. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next time, toss to the side. Oh, I was hoping I could hit something while I'm falling. Dang it. Well, yeah, here we landed. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I jumped in, uh, didn't die <laughs> like I did just now. Those guys grabbed some of my stuff now, I don't think so. Uh, let's put that on. Let's see, where is everything? <laughs> oh, man. Ah, up there. Okay. Whoop, what is that? That's a weird graphical glitch there. Hmm. Okay, I think we got, we got all our important stuff back. So... There is a minecart stuff up okay <laughs> was actually really fitting so I faced my fear and uh, jump in right away I'm just fixing stuff here at the moment just a little fixing 
and the moment I jump in, <laughs> because I wanted to go quick, I really didn't think about how cold the water would be or something. You know, and as we were actually in deep sea, there was like, you couldn't see the floor below us. There was just this sand bank building up where the reef was. It was <laughs> ice cold. <laughs> ice cold. Uh, compared to the outside temperature, which was uh, up in the 90s, um, you know, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is high 30s for the Euro guys, or good 30 degrees Celsius. And <laughs> so I jump in there and ice cold, and when it's cold, you cannot really breathe. So I'm in there like... <gasps> and then Karin, you know, my girlfriend, sees me and thinks I'm panicking or something. And she goes like, is everything all right? Is everything all right? Are you good? And he's like, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Everybody's looking at me. It's like, oh, man, that started well. So, okay, so it took me fa five minutes to kind of get, you know, adjusted to the water. And uh, when it's that cold, you know, you, you want to snorkel. And when it's that cold, you can't really breathe slow and steady because that is what you need to do when you snorkel. Also, it was a bit windy, so waves were popping. So you might sometimes hit water in your snorkel, so that is why you have to breathe calmly, otherwise you might, you know, um, choke on some water or whatnot. So it takes a while to get adjusted, and after I did, I was kind of feeling comfortable snorkeling around, and then is that is when I saw the first... What do we have here? Glitchy? Something? When I saw the first jellyfish. <laughs> so it was pretty huge blue jellyfish. The thing is, uh, with these things, they are not like horrible. You know, if you get stung by them, it will itch for half a day. It's like a bit of a, yeah, a bad mosquito bite, but not really, you know, something you have to be concerned about. Or nothing major. So whatever. Um, try to avoid them uh, because, yeah, you don't want to get stung, right? <laughs> And uh, while I swim um, about 50 meters away from the boat and snorkel around at that reef, which was, by the way, nice to see, uh, yeah, but not the most impressive thing I've ever seen. I'm what the? What is going on there? What? Okay, we just crashed the game. Interesting. And we're back. Okay. Everything seems normal now. Whoa, 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 whoa. The game totally doesn't like what we're doing right now. Oh, there's another glitched out stair. Oh, man. This will crash me again or what? Wait, wait. Whoa, the game really doesn't like what we're doing right now. What is going on? <laughs> uh, what? Uh, what? What is going on? I'm back up here. <laughs> uh, uh, Man, that uh, that is pretty weird. Let me wait. <laughs> uh, I I will relog. Um, all right. We're not dead. There's a block here. How did we just survive? Uh, I guess I'll be digging on this side. Maybe it was I was get getting caught in these ladders or something. I think we're back to normal now. Wow. So, I keep swimming. Everything is cool. There was five, six other people with us, avoiding the jellyfish, and suddenly, like, where the reef was, there was, as I said, this sandbank, and it was really sunny, and I swim, and you constantly look down, basically, right, because you want to see fish and stuff. So, I see this huge dark shadow. I was thinking somebody else was passing by, and I look, <laughs> and I swear it was a hammerhead shark. Not a gigantic one, maybe, I would say tops, eight f feet, tops. 
I'm pretty sure that the captain, but this captain was a, a big storyteller. He said it was a turn footer. I don't believe it. But still, when I saw that thing, I froze for a second, literally froze, didn't know what to do. And then um, I go up and I hear the captain go like, um, shark, um, watch out, guys, be calm, get out of the water. Yeah, calm, calm, forget calm. I was like Mark Spitz, if you know the guy. He was a really big swimmer back in the days. I was like swimming. Man, I was going. I, I you know, girlfriend, thankfully, she was um, leaving the, the area like, I don't know, five minutes before me or something and was really close to the boat. And when I arrived the boat, she was uh, um, climbing up the stairs. I hit her in the butt because <laughs> I came up from behind, you know, literally grabbing the freaking ladder, having her on my shoulders and lifting her up. And go! <laughs> Get to the dang boat, you know, real life. Serious. She was like, what is going on? <laughs> Looking at me disturbed, you know, and because I was freaking out because of the dang shark. Everybody else was out of the water. Nobody else went in again. And the captain was like, oh man, that's pretty cool. I haven't seen a hammerhead here in a while. And you hear these stories of people getting attacked by sharks. And, you know, hammerheads are super peaceful, you know. I was, like, stupid. You know, I'm not... I, I'm a... Um, you know, I'll watch a crap load of documentaries about animals. And especially shark and all kinds of things. And I know for a fact that there's only a few um, sharks that actually attack humans. And that can be really dangerous for humans. There is uh, the big, big hammerheads, you know, the six meter long be beasts. Um, they do that. They uh, attack humans here and there. Um, but normally they are more uh, careful. There's other uh, uh, species of shark which are a bit more stressful. But the hammerheads, th those small hammerheads, they normally won't do anything. And he, he went away real quickly. But for, still, I panicked, learned that about me now. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show me my weird, uh, you, my weird bed. Check that out. <laughs> um, it's been like that. I think I will not change it. Let's try to sleep in it. Maybe it gets updated. Oh, Sass is on anyways. No, but we'll keep it. I like it. It's some kind of weird glitch that happened after we updated. <laughs> uh, that's unique. Nobody has a... Maybe everybody at his bed looked like that now, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, that was the shark story. That freaked me out. Um, really freaked me out. I was scared at that moment, which was not rational. And, you know... You picture these situations when you watch uh, documentaries about sharks and stuff. You think, okay, what would you do when you see a shark? And all they teach you is stay calm because sharks will always go for panicking things in the water or be more interested in it. And I always thought to myself, yes, whenever I will be in such a situation, now as I learned it, I will just stay calm <laughs> and collect it and just swim away gracefully and there will be no problem with the shark. Well, reality was a bit different as I learned. <laughs> okay, so now let me go down and grab a lot of dirt. I just put it away without a thought because yeah, I didn't think what I want to do next. And yeah, we need to patch up some holes around the perimeter so we can make sure um, we can do the big flood soon. I think I uh, should be able to kind of pull it off next time. Need to think about it a little bit. Um, it probably involves um, a little bit of planning as well. Um, but yeah, I want to do that really soon and then yeah, people think what is next. Um, there's always a next. As I said, I want to do some building and um, yeah, around the base, make it look a bit more pretty, add some comfortable features to it. And yeah, I want to make a gold farm. Um, and to do that, well, there's many different ways how to do it. Why is there so many mobs about? Uh, many different ways to do it. I, in the world, I made this overworld portal farm, a mega portal farm. But there's, uh, of course, always the way to do it on top of the nether. And yeah, that would be, of course, a nice option. You could try here on the Micro server. Um, well, uh, there's always uh, this thing with me and um, going on top of the nether. <coughs> I always say, as long as there's no way to break bedrock, I don't think it's legit, because you don't really have access to it. You have to use tricks, you have to end the pearl through, right? So maybe we know about a way how to break bedrock again. And I just haven't had time to show you that, but well, maybe we do that soon. 
Okay, so I quickly want to go around here and check. There is still some case we have to check out. By the way, people were a bit concerned uh, about X-ray devices not uh, working anymore. Um, it works. It works. You can do it the same way using the same materials. I have um, my equipment here with me. Um, but yeah, as we have a <laughs> X-ray uh, loading chunk device here right now, we don't really have to use it. But uh, there was something. Where's this pick? All right, here we go. Those are the areas I need to take care of. You know, it needs to be filled in. We don't want to have no water flowing down in these holes. And yeah, we arrived at Key Largo again. As I said, when we did the diving, and that was a pretty crazy situation there with the shark. It was not life-threatening, but for me it was... <laughs> Interesting uh, to see how you actually panic, um, although there's no real need to. And yeah, taught me a lesson that you, um, despite you have, you think what you would do, or should do, could do, whatever, how you want to call it. Um, yeah, you're not prepared. <laughs> An interesting lesson. Um, after that, we quickly made our way back to Miami Heat. Yeah, Miami Heat. <laughs> to Miami to see. The Miami Heat. Um, it was Chicago Bulls versus Miami Heat. And yeah, it was of course a highlight for me. As you know, I'm a basketball fan and played professional basketball for many, many years here in Germany. And yeah, it um, was of course great to see the return of Derek Rose. To see LeBron play, who is considered the best probably right now. Um, it was interesting to see D-Wade, Chris Bosch. Um, Chris Bosch, I'm a big fan of him. And, of course, the Chicago Bulls lineup is not really much less impressive as the Miami Heat. So it was a great game to watch. We had decent seats um, really far up. I mean, that was already crazy expensive. It was because the ring ceremony was happening at the same night. Sadly, you know, I didn't stay longer in Miami. Then I would have skipped that because, yeah, well, the ring ceremony was great. You know, they showed some crazy movies um, and fireworks were going off and, you know, people were cheering. It was really great, but paying an extra almost 100 bucks for that because the seats we had were 175 bucks each and they were really kind of far up, which was nice on the other hand because you had a nice overview on the play because, yeah, that is something that interested me to see the tactical uh, side of the game, you know, have a nice overview to see how they set the screens, how they move about. So was actually pretty cool, but if you would go only one rank lower, which brings you uh, maybe, I don't know, a few feet closer to the playing field, we would be already in the $600 range. And uh, I didn't even ask about, um, you know, courtside seats for this game. So yeah, we got these seats, uh, seats up there. We enjoyed ourselves a lot. My girlfriend came with me, of course. Um, for her, it was also interesting. You know, she's not like a super crazy basketball fan. But as we are together for 11 years uh, by now, um, or yeah, over 11 years actually, you know, she, of course, knows my basketball days as well. And there she watched many games where I was participating cheering for me and so on so yeah um of course it was um, enjoyable to watch and quick remark for the basketball fans back in 97 i also saw michael jordan play um these comparisons you know who's be the next jordan blah 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 it's always about who's the best in our days but one thing was very obvious michael jordan in his days was the difference between him and the other players on the pitch Compared to the difference uh, between LeBron and the other players on the and the other players on the pitch was not was b way more crazy for Jordan. It was impressive to see LeBron play. He is a train. He is a tank. Extremely powerful. Um, quick first step. Um, his power. Um, it's not as elegant, you know, as smooth as MJ was. The movements of MJ, Michael Jordan, were like a poetry in motion. And um, yeah, LeBron is more like a well-oiled machine, you know. So it's really hard to compare them. But uh, it's for sure that um, LeBron will not be another MJ or something. He will be very good and one of the dominant players. And maybe rake in records and stuff. But it's not as exciting to watch him play as it was to watch MJ as a basketball enthusiast. Because MJ just looked 
too dang smooth, guys, I can tell you. <laughs> so, yeah, but still, of course, Derek Rose, uh, quickly want to add that. It was the quote-unquote return of Derek Rose. He um, had a bad injury and came back for the first official game. And he did good, he did good. And you could see that he's uh, also a special player. He was in the warm-up. Um, I was watching him. Um, he was literally hitting 50 shots in a row from all positions. Um, not exaggerating here. Extremely good basketball player. Ball handling from, you know, top notch, top notch. Extremely, extremely nice to watch as a basketball fan. How he handles the ball and how, yeah, full control, full control movements. Really nice to see. Strong, strong player. Um, the other as well. Um, I could go on for a while, but I don't want to talk forever about the basketball. But believe me, for me, it was one of the highlights. And yeah, after that, we slowly but surely made our way down towards, or yeah, up, you better say, up north, um, towards Orlando. And yeah, on the way to there, uh, kind of in the middle, Jael was staying with some friends and yeah, uh, me and Karin were meeting up with them there and we stayed one night at their place. Thanks a lot for that guys, much appreciated. And yeah, I um, also went out to a shooting range um, because yeah, the guy who was owning the house, um, he also um, had some guns um, which is kind of normal, you know, uh, Florida has pretty liberal gan gun laws, um, you can... Um, Basically, if you want to buy a gun, you know, there's going to be a background check and it takes about a week or so and when that gets cleared, you will um, get the guns you want and yeah, you, there's semi-automatic weapons, of course, AR-15s and similar, but also um, high-powered rifles, um, bigger calibers and so on. So yeah, a variety of guns. What we had was a 12-gauge shotgun. Um, we had an um, AR-15 and we had a 9mm Beretta handgun, which was a newer model. It included a lot of safety features, a noob-friendly gun, so to speak. Because yeah, I had limited gun shooting experience. It was not that I had zero experience. Um, one of my uncles is a hunter. So in my family, uh, hunting played a certain role, not really an active role in my life, because yeah, he lived far away, but he was a hunter. And so I shot guns before, BB guns and also um, hunting um, rifles, but not, for example, um, a Beretta handgun or a 12-gauge shotgun or um, a semi-automatic weapon. So it was really interested uh, in it and wanted to see how it goes. Um, um, yeah, in Germany you are not used to having weapons of that yeah, type around and... Um, me and JL were, we will not say scared, but we had a lot of respect for the gun. Um, before um, we started, um, we did a long, long security briefing. First, about, you know, basic rules about to handling guns. And then another long portion about how to behave on a shooting range, what not to do. For example, you know, never turn around with the gun in hand or something. People will not like that. Um, always have your gun pointed towards the aim and so on. Basic rules um, that needed to be explained. And yeah, we followed that because if you, yeah, quote unquote, play with guns, you never play with guns. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... You have to be really careful with them because they are deadly weapons. And yeah, especially uh, the 12-gauge shotgun, <coughs> violent kickback, um, yeah, and uh, very powerful. And it was pretty impressive to see how such a 12-gauge um, can obliterate, uh, you know, um, the yeah g aims we were shooting at with some cardboard stuff. And yeah, it was pretty interesting. Also, um, there was a guy with a 50 cal. <laughs> on the shooting range. I don't know if you're uh, yeah, familiar with these guns and stuff, but 50 cal is a really, really big bullet and it's a huge high-powered rifle, um, typically a sniper rifle style. And with that thing, you can literally take out um, yeah, armored vehicles. Um, <laughs> really, oh man, which is a spawning. It's really crazy the, how loud that thing is and yeah, to see that thing in action uh, from really... Yeah, up close was definitely impressive. Okay, so we did the basic fixes around here. 
we arrived um, at the shooting range and then next up basically is the Minecon and the Minecon was yeah and our, of course the Minecraft fan meetup oh man I need to tell you about that too that was insane and yeah that deserves a separate episode because there's so many amazing things happened there I, I mean it was just brilliant uh, you know I really I need to go through some footage and think about what I want to say about that because it was a great moment and I know it was very special for many people who visited the Minecon there so if I want to talk about it I want to do it in a respectful and appropriate way because it was again very special and yeah to do this, we're gonna go back to back, baby. Tomorrow, that's gonna be the next Minecraft episode. Um, it's gonna be a talky one as well, but um, I think I wanna yeah, start preparing the big flood here. Um, we wanna set up signs, we wanna put up water, and so on. And I have a plan of shooting fireworks up when the thing floods or something. That would be really nice, and yeah, I might get in touch with another Minecracker who was also at the Minecon, maybe good wants to do it. I rarely do go labs with him. Maybe we can do it together, you know, craft some signs, put stuff up and talk about the Minecon. We'll see. Maybe it's gonna be me on my own. Maybe someone else. Let's wait and see. I'm definitely happy that I'm back. Really looking forward to bring back the gaming related content. Um, but I definitely want to thank you one more time for your big, big support with the vlogs I did. Thanks for that. Really amazing. You're great, guys. And that's it for this episode. See you tomorrow. I'm out. Bye, guys.